Welcome to the last lecture on Congress. Today we're going to be talking about oversight. Congress is expected to oversee the activities of the executive branch. This consists of oversight, which are efforts by Congress through hearings, investigations, and other techniques to exercise some control over the activities of the executive agencies. This is done in order to ensure that funding is spent correctly and that laws are enforced properly. Now there are many different ways that Congress can provide oversight over the legislative branch. The committees that investigate the executive branch can do a couple of different things. They can subpoena witnesses and, and essentially force members of the executive branch to come before Congress and testify. They can yeah, compel them to testify because if they don't, they can find them in contempt of Congress. They can charge them for perjury if they lie during testimony. And uh, But the problem with some of these oversight powers is it depends essentially on cooperation from the executive branch to prosecute anybody that's been um, found in contempt or perjury. And that, that is a problem because um, essentially you're asking the executive branch to prosecute itself. For instance, in uh, the Obama administration, the Department of Justice Attorney General uh, Eric Holder was held in contempt of Congress by uh, for not turning over some paperwork or some um, some essentially some documents that Congress had requested through a subpoena, and nothing was ever done with um, Eric Holder because who's going to prosecute the Attorney General? Now, oversight also falls under its advice and consent powers. The Senate must confirm executive appointments. They must confirm ambassadors and federal judges and Supreme Court judges and treaties. For a treaty to be approved by the Senate, two-thirds of them must be present and vote to approve it. For appointments, a simple majority is required. The Senate only occasionally exercises its power to reject treaties and appointments. Um, the advice and consent function is kind of fluid. The Senate does not have to consider any presidential appointments or any treaties. They only do so when they feel like it. There's no mechanism by which the president or the executive department forces the Senate to consider one of their appointments or one of their treaties. Now, presidents lately have been making frequent use of executive agreements with foreign countries that has the force of a treaty, but it does not need Senate approval. The only problem with uh, executive agreements in lieu of a treaty is that an executive agreement does not have any permanency to it. In other words, the next president can just as easily revoke an executive agreement as Congress could. Congress also has the authority to remove federal officials, including the president, through what's known as the impeachment process. Now, the impeachment power is divided between the House and the Senate so that it would not be abused. Now, under this power, the House has the authority to charge or essentially impeach a president for treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Now, since treason is outlined in the Constitution and bribery is pretty well defined, um, this leaves high crimes and misdemeanors is the only confusing or vague part of the part of the Constitution on removing these officials. In other words, Congress can remove somebody for whatever it considers to be high crimes and misdemeanors. It doesn't actually have to be uh, a violation of the criminal code. It just has to be something that Congress does not approve of. Now, essentially, in the House, 
they will conduct an investigation into the president or anybody else's who's being impeached uh, actions. And if they if they believe that they are guilty of an impeachable offense, they'll have a simple majority vote and they will uh, issue an indictment and forward the articles of impeachment to the Senate. The Senate will act as a it'll they'll hold the trial. The Senate, the individual senators will act as a jury. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court will be preside over the trial, and lawyers from both sides will present their case to the jury or the Senate. And then, whereas the Senate will actually vote either to acquit or to impeach. Now, no president in history has ever been convicted of an impeachable offense. Uh, there were three presidents who had articles of impeachment forwarded to the Senate where they actually had a trial. Andrew Johnson, Bill Clinton, and Donald Trump. Another president, Nixon, was never officially impeached. He was on the verge of impeachment, and he knew that if it went to the Senate for trial, he would lose and thus become the very first president to be removed from office. So he beat him to the punch and resigned. That is all of the Congress lecture.